Hello, BookTube. Hello, BookTube. Well, we've been invaded. No, we haven't. We uh, have a guest. We're thrilled to have him. Two. When was the... Uh, two, absolutely. Frida's a star. And little Eli took the Frida this... Remember, that wasn't always the case. That wasn't always the case. Because they were closer in size to each other before. And he's probably a little bit more sure of himself. I think so. The youngest boy here used to be very leery of Frida, and yeah. she was kind of leery of him too. But mm -hmm. they were best buds this time around. Oh, it was amazing. He wouldn't stop. They she both. Is. Yeah. She doesn't. There are cats here, and one of the cats is bigger than she is, so she doesn't wander around. Mm. She sort of stays next to me. <laughs> but but on the on the couch, you have kids war swarming all over. The, I don't know what the proper collective word is for a group of kids. <laughs> swarm is swarm good enough? Uh, danger. Danger is the word we use, right? His favorite collective word he can't say are books. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could, but... But they come over. One after another would just come over and, and pet the little bean, so that made her perfectly happy. <laughs> so, um, it's been a long time since you've been... Well, you've never been here. I've never been to this house. No. 1830. 1833. The only Mark Richardson would leave an incredibly old Vermont house for an even older Vermont house. This place is incredible. It's incredible. And when you hear him go on or post on Instagram about how there's no level surfaces in here, he is not exaggerating. I swear, you'll be walking, you'll start on one end of a room, and if you're concentrating on a book in your hand or on something out the window and you just naturally assume where your foot is going to land, it'll go down like that by at least half an inch. Because the, the, the floors have a will of their own. The centuries old, the foundation is solid granite, well, a good foot and a half thick, more. Um, he but the place is, how thick the walls are. You can look yeah. out the windows and see how thick the walls are. Yeah, this is an old, old place for here. I mean, and it couldn't have to be right to be here still. Oh after yeah, all this time, eighteen thirty. Yeah, Deb and I were only on our second marriage in eighteen thirty, but not to each other. Or to each other, we thought oh, it would work out the second. Time. Yeah, well, that's tough. My Deb, I mean. He got the newer model. Yes. Yeah. Considerably better. Now. Yeah, but my dad didn't get the newer model. <laughs> no, you were, you were on eBay. Right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Discount. Yeah. Please. Other than the picture, it was as is. It was four parts. It was four parts. <laughs> yeah. Or missing parts. <laughs> Uh, so you had to do stuff to come. So when was the last time you were in Vermont with us, though? We were talking about it on the drive up here. I think it was Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, things didn't work out. At we're almost to Thanksgiving now, folks. Yeah, it was almost a year. Yeah. Who and, could have guessed? And yet you used to come up regularly. Every month. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. I remember your reaction way back in, like, early March. Your reaction mirrored the reaction of a lot of people in the country. It was almost personal anger. Oh, I was... Yeah. Were you saying, I'm not going to let this thing interfere with my plans to see my friends? And none of us knew. <laughs> none of us knew that that kind of thinking would have to go... A lot of kinds of thinking. Yeah. yeah. If you're part of 60% of the country, if you're part of 40% of the country, that kind of thinking is still ruling the roost. Yeah. <laughs> but you but aren't one of those people, no, so I'm you not. had to do something. I had to quarantine. I had to go to the uh, Vermont Department of Health website and find out. Once it became obvious that you don't need to quarantine going across the border from Massachusetts to Vermont if your county is reporting a certain number of infections per million inhabitants. And it became obvious to me after a couple of months of just checking that thing every day that it was never going to go down low enough. So the only I just went to the website and said, all right, I can't cross over without a quarantine. What do you want me to do to come up and visit Mark? And it was a two-week quarantine. No brattle. No brattle. No, and one of you, <laughs> you're probably watching this, one of you correctly guessed why I wasn't doing brattle book calls. And said, you're not doing Brattle book hauls because you're quarantining. And you're quarantining because you're, you want to go up to to, uh, to, to Vermont. And you also um, were telling me about simple life things like grocery stores. Yeah. You used to schlep I did. groceries on a subway. I can't even imagine. Well, I can't imagine. I never do it. Yeah, I used to schlep groceries on a subway. And I don't have to do it anymore. This taught me about Amazon grocery delivery. It's absolutely easy. It's cheap, and it's absolutely easy. You just click a button and say, well, and the website says, oh, great, okay, 
uh, here's a discount. And also, when would you like these? Is an hour good? <laughs> See, you couldn't do that. No, we couldn't do that, Grandma. Well, we can do it with, uh, what is it, Deb Shaw's? Shaw's? They will deliver because we had some families in our library, um, elderly families, who they did get deliveries. But when we were at the old farmhouse, we were up farther north, there was nothing. So I guess we technically could have here, but we couldn't where we were before. So, and we're we're actually come south towards Massachusetts with this house. Would you? I mean, by twenty miles, and yet it's a farther drive for us to get you because we moved farther inland. So, uh, you guys had a good drive. It was a beautiful drive. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. The drive up here in the to the old farmhouse feels. Feels like I'm talking about a friend who's died. It's so weird to think it we're not going to hang out in that old house. Again. Houses have personalities, and this it's more than their own. I've only been here a few hours, and this place has a personality of its own. And you know, and the old farmhouse will have new memories. People will make new memories. You're right. But this place is, it's amazing. Yeah. It's uh, it's so amazing that I'm not planning to leave. <laughs> Danger, Will Robertson. <laughs> but, but yes. Uh, uh, what were we talking about? So, so you had to go through a lot to even get here. Right. Yes. But the I was. Oh, that's right. I was expecting the uh, the drive to be similar, which is mostly highways to just eat up the time, just cut out the time. But instead, it was a gorgeous scenic route. Yeah. Can only imagine how pretty it would be in the winter. Which scenic is, route is what we like call a, our roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no impersonal highways at all. Yeah. The only uh, logistical nightmare, uh, not not really for me because I don't I don't drive. Never sat behind the wheel of a car. Careful, uh, And maybe not for seasoned New Englanders, but for anybody else in Massachusetts, we have a thing called a rotary, and uh, it's it's also known colloquially as a roundabout. And we must have gone through ten of them. I don't like them. I don't think they make any sense at all. No. They don't seem to me to make... I would be the last person to know, but they don't seem to me to make any sense. And if you make a mistake on a rotary, it's not like taking the wrong exit on a highway. If you make a mistake on a rotary... Well, there, there used to be an old comedy routine about someone who di got off... A, who didn't know which exit to get off on the rotary and just kept going around and around. And well, around. the problem with them is I think, and I felt it myself a little bit, they make you aggressive. Well, it's my turn. And when you're dealing with a vehicle that weighs tons and I guess propelled, that's true, isn't it? Because it's it's driver initiative. It's not like an And you become offended when some poor right. person gets right. disconcerted it, instead of being understanding because you're on your way to do something. Right. That's not the way it's to be. It's not like uh, lights or right of way. Instead it's it's everyone using their own initiative. Yeah. And a kind of And courtesy. there becomes a sort of aggression. Oh well, we made it. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't like them. I don't like them. <laughs> so but, the quarantine was worth it? Yeah. Because here I am. Yeah, it was great. Um, you, you know, you would do every little teeny thing we can for normalcy. Of course, we've got the kids. None of them go to school. They all are um, remote learning, which is different than homeschooling, of course. So they're remote learning. They're with their teachers online. Deb does a sort of a hybrid. She goes into work and she works from home, but her organization's real good. And library has limited hours, so um, I, I do my regular work, but it's sort of a hybrid too. So it's not the same world that you were here totally within Thanksgiving. And when somebody comes back or somebody you've had a long-term history with, and they, it's almost like when you walk in and you look at a kid you haven't seen in a year. That is actually it's, what happened. His kids continue to grow. <laughs> yes, and I continue to be more careful. <laughs> but um, think of the changes we've seen, in the, and everybody out there has, but sometimes it's, well, it was very dramatic at the beginning, but there are some gradual parts to it where you adapt. Yes, and, and it was dramatic at the beginning. It was very dramatic. I, I wish, again, I don't want to stray into politics. <laughs> it need not have been as traumatic as it was. <laughs> if, if only we had known. <laughs> if 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 Robert Silverberg had sent this to his editor, he would have been asked for a few rewrites, wouldn't he? He would have been. Okay, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> uh, but we live in a science fiction world, don't we? Now we do. Yes, I was just oh, showing well, we that I, I brought up my uh, my tablet with my smart keyboard, which is a Star Trek device. That's exactly what it is. And you did it during a pan global pandemic. 
during a global pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole way up here, the car was telling us where to go. Mm. <laughs> In a human voice. Well. Not a, not a, not a printout yeah. on a screen, even, but a human voice just telling you where to go. Because it knows where you are. Because a satellite is watching where you go. <laughs> and Elon funny. Musk is putting more of them up there. It's amazing. So I have a friend who's an astronomer. Uh, amateur astronomer. One of the biggest and oldest astronomy clubs is in Springfield. It's an amazing group of people, and they're, so Elon Musk, and I think he's a visionary, I'll give you that, but he's blanketing the earth with these satellites, which will give everybody access to Wi-Fi. Try using a telescope to look at the stars when you have, there's always a cost, isn't there? Yeah. To everything. Yeah, there's always a cost. You know, a crowded night sky and also Elon Musk harvesting all your information, all the information of everyone in the world. The one man who is afraid of AI. Has literally said he's afraid of artificial Yeah, animals. and when he says that, I wonder, what does he know that we don't? That, that well, because afraid. he probably owns it. <laughs> or it owns him. <laughs> Talk about a science fiction novel. Oh, my science goodness. Science fiction novel. That reminds me, when you mentioned Robert Silverberg, I forget who it was. One of you took my advice, I think it was my advice, or maybe it was yours, and read Up the Line by Robert Silverberg. And so I had be utterly you, repulsed right? by it. And yeah. no idea what even to make of it. Just, yeah, I, it wouldn't have been me because I... I, my book, too, <laughs> production's been way down because of moving. So, but uh, Mark's earlier point that it was a shock at the beginning, but some things are gradually moving back to the familiar. We thought we should at least appear on camp together. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long time. time. It's been a long time. <laughs> you know, next time, maybe, well, not next time, because, of course, we have to be realistic, but there will be a time when Jason Harrigan or Sean Stanfast or any of our other... Anybody uh, could be here with us, you know. Not David Murphy. Um, you gotta be nice. An evening without Schumpeter would be nice. <laughs> you know he's going to mention it. The two of them are like lovers. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't say any of that. <laughs> I know when the guy's smarter than me, I'm just going yeah, to take it easy. Oh, my God. So, yeah, no. You have to hope those days will come. Uh, you know, you don't know. You don't. You don't at all. I, because I, I, I was mentioning this to one of you, uh, I think via Voxer, uh, that all I think about is uh, the next COVID, the one that's far more communicable. Oh, and, herpes? And as dangerous as Ebola. Herpes. He keeps mentioning herpes. I think it must be an anniversary or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in the girls' group. <laughs> Um, so that could make it worse. Not better. That could mean we just claw our way out of this one to, to reach the next one. As long well, as we've always done that, we just have short-term memory problems. Yeah, what was the one uh, yellow age. fever in the late 1700s around here? You walk in a graveyard, you see all the. Um, my or, uh, my little library. The Spanish flu epidemic. Right, my little library survived. The Spanish, was already established in. Well established with Spanish flu. Some of you may recognize the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918 as the Spanish flu epidemic of 1917. If you listen to the president of the United States, mm -hmm. he said that for a year and has not been contradicted by anyone. Here's a literary note on that. A weird. I, I mean, you may have read it. I don't remember where I read it, but somebody was really critical of. Um, and if anybody out there knows what I'm talking about, it, it's been crazy lately, but. They were really critical of that generation, uh, the Hemingways, the Fitzgerald, John Dos Passos, how li they lived through it. It's almost never mentioned in the literature. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, and, and you, up to a certain point, you'd be hard-pressed to find any kind of serious concentration on it in, for instance, a study of Woodrow Wilson's administration. Really? The, the, idea, is, was, it, it didn't, the idea didn't seem to occur to biographers that the President of the United States should probably be deeply involved. Or, or that but an author, like a novelist, formative years, yeah. you would think that you would set a story where somebody was lost. I mean, we've seen that with the AIDS epidemic. We've seen it with, I don't know, what have, we, have we seen anything with Ebola or anything like that, literary-wise? Not that I know of. I mean, I don't know the answer to this. I just thought the article was, I was like, wow, I just... I mean, we've all read Hemingway, right? Yeah. There's not, I don't remember a single mention of it. No, me neither. I think it might have to do with technology as well. I mean, you, 
when you have an outbreak that happens, two things. One, when you have an outbreak that happens and you have the technology that allows everybody to know about it, and to know it, not only the extent of it, but the, the science of it, you know, so that the people in 1918 may not have written about this thing because to them it was just a thing that happens. No one well, I don't know. I saw it. the pictures with people with masks, the signs that are similar now, wear a mask. I mean, they, I think it was, there was, I think there was trauma there. there could, yeah. Well, and another thing is that I think in the in the intervening two hundred or hundred years, uh, the American public has changed its attitude about how involved the federal government should be in things like that. Yeah, I think that's why it never occurred to biographers of Wilson to dwell on it. Well, maybe on the, maybe on that level, I understand what you're saying, but but Hemingway or Faulkner or these people living yeah. there. I mean, you have some pretty heavy hitters there that doesn't, at least as far as what this article well, is saying. Well, I wonder doing. what what this will do. I, I was mentioning this earlier today. I wonder what the the new fiction that comes out, like for instance, you, you're writing it now, you get it edited, you sell it, you flog it all around, it gets worked up, printed, and then published. So let's say early 2022. Is that will, too quick? Will it be reflected, or will those authors ignore it just the way the ones you mentioned? I, I think it's uh, I I didn't. I mean, to what extent? If you write a novel about uh, young lovers in Manhattan, and it's your dream to write this book, and then you do, to what extent are you going to worry that if you put all of COVID nineteen in there, that will become what it is? It will become a COVID nineteen book. Well, I mean, it's a legitimate question. So maybe you don't do that. Maybe you just don't do that. Maybe you just don't mention it. <laughs> and then, of course, we know what happened after the. 1918, we start moving into the craziness of the 20s. Is that going to happen? I Everybody mean, just lets everything go, you know? Deb and I tried our third marriage in the 20s. Yeah. Didn't work out. Yeah. You need the new model. Yeah. She was a flapper. I was a leg breaker for Al Capone. <laughs> we thought we could make it work. Which is why I'm very careful what I say <laughs> when he's here. <laughs> just saying. I won't weep into my wine. Because uh, you don't have any. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't need wine because I have my tablet. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't need anything, even this lousy little dog. <laughs> no, I know that ain't true. Yeah. You want to make an appearance, baby? <laughs> oh, somebody's really tired. <laughs> Remember how little she was the first she was time she came tired here? Little thing the first time mm. to the old farmhouse. And I was learning about her. I had no idea how she would react. None. No idea she'd run around, if she'd bark and chase the cats. She no had some idea. adventures. She did. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And she's had adventures every time since. She met out Way more confident now. Way more confident. And I also know her now. I had no idea when she, the first time when she went up to the old farmhouse, I had no idea what a good dog she is. Just no misbehavior. Check with me before she does something. No disproportionate responses to anything. Just incredible. A rarity in my dog owning experience. But, but she's exhausted right now. That's why she's not staying. She, she might be right here otherwise. But, but we're going to have adventures. Yes? Yeah. Yep. yep. We got uh, you some plans. expect book hauls. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to expect book hauls. Yeah. Um, I, I've got still a few items over at the farmhouse. I've got a buffet that weighs, it has a granite top, and it probably weighs 800 pounds. And my wife knows where it's going to go, but I'm afraid if I lift and start to move it, I'll be what goes. <laughs> and I've got an old 1930s aluminum canoe, oh, 1930s, 1950s aluminum canoe. 17 for I got to get that in the truck. We got uh, a freezer. Then we're about done. It's weird when you move out of a place, you do it in steps like that. And uh, we were able to unpack a lot while we were moving in, unpack books, try to fit them. Because your bookcases actually fit your house you're in. When you pick up bookcases, they fit the house you're in. You fit them to the space you have. When you go to a new house, the yes. spaces are never the same. <laughs> Although the books are in place. I like the priorities here. Yeah. <laughs> the books are in place. <laughs> they'll, they'll be shifting, but they're not in boxes. Yeah. That, that is awesome. That is exactly what, whenever I move, that's all. Right. I did, I talked to you about it a little earlier. I weeded a little, I, I weeded before I left some pretty obvious stuff that we all have. 
um, when we got here and I started fitting things in, saying, well, do I really got a little critical with myself and realized that uh, that's one of the things that you can let go when you have like a corner bookshelf. It comes out of sight, out of mind. you, you got to pay attention to all of them because it's like a garden, right? If you don't weed it, you're going to get a bunch of junk. And I had some stuff that was pretty weird. So, I don't know. I'm just chuckling because the implication of what he's saying is that now that he's gained this control over the precise nature of what he wants in his book collection. I'll lose total control <laughs> immediately. <laughs> but that is what's going to happen. He's right. going yeah. to lose control. It won't be those books. There'll be piles. Let piles me have them. my moment. Okay. <laughs> and there, the place just rambles everywhere. Such yeah. a, there's such a wonderful, rambly old place that you're going to be able to fit three times as many books. Oh, you. yeah. Once you figure out the logistics. Well, that's it, right? Because I've got a giant breezeway leads to a carriage house, and then there's a big space over that. Got tons of them. Yeah, and we haven't really even explored that. There's parts of there that I've never been up there. You know, and, and uh, there's the possibility I hear that perhaps you will make your own bookcases. Yes, I like working with wood. A lot of my tools have been locked up for a long time because of our lifestyle, and the cellar here is very old. There's a gigantic fireplace was a summer fireplace looks like something you could see betsy ross in front of oh absolutely it's, and it's in it's, wonderful condition that, it, that room. must date from 1830 oh yeah yeah it's incredible yeah so the fireplace i mean down in the, there's a fireplace in this room but there's a fireplace in the basement that's a half that the size of that wall just incredible just <laughs> incredible with it doesn't look like you can look at it immediately and know that you'd see something at plymouth plantation that would look oh like yes the big iron things where they hang in all the pots, and it has firebox underneath the spot where you'd have baking. And uh, well, they call them summer. Um, they call them summer, summer kitchens, right? And you would there was a walkway down in between these huge granite walls the house sits on, and in the summertime they would cook there. And uh, I, I don't know why they didn't do it in the winter. I could read up on that. I'd be interested to find out. I think another thing that would be interesting is perhaps for BookTube to start emailing you the dimensions for the bookcases they want. Do you want a Richardson original? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you probably don't. <laughs> Once the workshop is up and running? Uh, well, when I get the workshop up and running, you know who I watch? Talk about, well, you watch, you don't watch just BookTube. No, you I'm watch sure. a lot of YouTube. Lot of and I'm sure you know, know this, or if you don't, you would love it. I love watching Adam Savage Tested. From the old Mythbusters, that's a guy who knows how to build a workshop because he doesn't just do woodworking. He'll do any of that. Yeah. He, one day he's got a sewing machine that's making cosplay, and the next minute he's working with metal, and the next yeah. day he's doing wood. I haven't watched a lot of him because it seems like his episodes are aimed at fellow handy people, and I'm not. So yeah, I'm there's, there's there's some truth in that. I find him fascinating. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, same thing as when I watch when I watch tech channels of people who specifically yeah. they go online and they order a hundred fifty dollar old MacBooks to see what they can cobble together. They unscrew them and take them apart. And I don't know how to do any of that, but it's well, there's the, a fascinating element to watch. We had Sam, my oldest boy, who is sort of a tech guy, but on a wider level, almost like the. Uh, the trades type of guy, a guy who likes that sort of stuff. And Adam Savage had taken a Nerf assault weapon type thing. And they're bright, bright colors, as they should be, so children don't get hurt by an inadvertent interaction with somebody who thinks it's real. They don't look real at all. Um, and they did the work on a plastic item because, of course... Savage also worked on the Star Wars franchise and all these others. Oh, no kidding. And props, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. he has a huge user. And by the time he was done, you watched how he did it, and he made it look like something off, what's that? Halo. Halo. With some sergeant guy or something. It was a ter terrifying looking one. It was plastic. It's not real. But how he did it, what you have to know. So I always wonder about these. Uh, remember, what was this, Ray Harryhausen? Yeah. That was, to me... Special effects when yeah. I was growing up, and and Star Trek, and then Star Wars, and then some of these other things really changed that a lot. It started looking really different. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, you didn't cut away to it. It was right. the special effects started being part of what you were looking at. 
Yeah, he was actually, um, Adam Savage was talking about seeing for the first time, if I get this wrong for anybody who's a really Star Wars fan, I apologize, but he's, the first time he saw, I think he called it the five foot Millennial Falcon. Uh, Am yes, I right on yes, that? I'm close on that? Big, he said it was actually one of the most beautiful things he's ever seen. It took, I, if I remember correctly, it took forever to make. It was this lovingly made. It actually tours the world as a work of art. The Five Foot Millennium Falcon tours yes. the world? I didn't know that. I, I didn't either. I'm watching it. So you learn from these other YouTube channels things that, you know, I, I do mostly watch book two when I have an out. I overdosed on tech channels in order to locate my iPad. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know, it makes sense, right? You're trying to research what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They can, you can see what they're doing. You know, they can, they can run it all down for you, as opposed to websites, written websites. Yeah. I did, um, I had to, re uh, I had, and I'd never done it before, I had to season some cast iron pans. How the heck do you do that? Somebody can tell you, and you're, you try to interpret it. You sit on YouTube and watch yeah, for five watch. minutes and you can do 12 of them in right. no time at all. Deb did that with a, was it a dryer or a washer? Dryer. A dryer, just, it would have cost me 150 bucks to have a tech come in and do it. She ordered a part for like how much? 50 bucks. 50 bucks, she did it. While I'm holding the camera. <laughs> I used to have she, a cast iron skillet. Yeah, yeah. I was told by the person who gave it to me that, I, I said, oh, this will be easy to upkeep. And she said, water. Must never touch this unless yeah. you're cooking with it. Yeah. We have a lot of this with water. <laughs> so yeah, we like them. What you want to do is make it a black hole yeah. that remembers everything it has ever touched, yeah. and it's a, there's a trick to it, but it's not a complex trick. Yeah. So, uh, but I don't have it anymore. Deb got it. Yeah. And that was during the Jackson administration, huh? She had the hots for Andrew Jackson. <laughs> never been able to forgive either one of them. Well, even if she had, I still wouldn't forgive him. Or there'll be Star Trek in our future as well, right? We're going to catch up on Picard where we I, left I off? I stopped. I, I was so much, in 2019, I was so much enjoying watching this new Star Trek Picard with someone who has also been a Star Trek fan from the beginning that I realized I didn't want to keep watching it unless I could do it that way. I was just spoiled that way. So we ended with a cliffhanger. A long time ago, there were probably ten episodes that have been happening since then. And I don't have any idea what's happened in the show. I stopped watching a lot of things because of that. I stopped, um, and we weren't watching it. Did we, maybe we did watch some of them together. I stopped. I never finished that season of The Expanse. No, I watched all of The Expanse. Did you? Did? I never did. I liked the I show. I love it so much. I love the I show. Know. I don't know why. I just lost heart. Uh, uh, and we stopped the Jack Ryan. The Jack Ryan. I the fell Tom apart the second season. season. I we, uh, wasn't thrilled. I, I hadn't seen the first season, and we started watching the second season. And the first episode of the second season, we we're sitting there thinking, "Yeah, well, that was pretty well done. Ah, I like this actor." And the second season, you could see it just increasing a little. Of, huh, that was pretty well done. I like this actor. That didn't really make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> no. And then the third episode, oh my God, we were like script doctors in Hollywood saying, no, 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 that doesn't work at all. Where's the logic here? That character... It really work. fell apart. Well, if you can find those mistakes, then they're there, right? Oh, no. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, they've got no... There was no reason for that to happen. Not with all that money involved. No. no. I mean, I mean I've seen... If you're watching a, a multi-million dollar cable production... And you're watching it wanting to like it. And maybe you've had a little wine and you're not being a film student critical. And you still both immediately say, he wasn't wearing that hat in the last scene. What's he, where did he get that from? They're on a river. <laughs> you, go to, you go to haberdashery, they pull off in the jungle and go to haberdashery. And the hero should go to jail. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing worse than a, the hero in a show who, no, and we've, there is a Star Trek series like this, too. We're so superior, we don't play by team rules, so we'll get everybody else killed. Yeah, we'll get everybody else in danger. Well, he actually well, got people killed. I, I would also send him to jail for wearing skinny jeans and pointed Hollywood shoes in a jungle. <laughs> I don't think you'd dress okay, that. Okay, well, I, did, I was in the jungle in the 70s, so I'd be in trouble. Are we sure of that? Does anyone really Nobody know? Nobody really knows. 
we have only vague sigils of Mark Richardson's past. We don't know for sure. One thing that's reasonably well attested is that the Soviet Union existed when he set foot in it, and that it didn't exist when he left it. Well, that's true, actually. I'm actually sure there's how those things are connected. There's actually a couple other countries like that. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Though. Timing is everything. And mine's always been bad. So, you're here? We're here. You made the journey? Yes, and the place is wonderful. Just mm -hmm. big and rambling and friendly. You can tell when you walk around in here that, uh, that it's hosted hundreds of lives. And that is a weird feeling that you don't get that just anywhere. I'll say it again. Leave it to Mark. It's not to haunted. To pack up and leave an incredibly old Vermont house in order to go to an even older Vermont house. That is just... <laughs> it's not haunted for those of you who could... So... When I, I've, I've lived in other parts of the country at times, and I remember sitting in a classroom once, and the topic came up, would you live in a house where somebody had died? And like 80% of the people in there said no, and they looked horrified. I'm going, I've never lived in a house where somebody hasn't. <laughs> 1830, you died at home. You died at home. You wouldn't thought of doing it. Think of how many people lived here. Think of how many people have died here. People have died in the upstairs rooms here. Absolutely. With family around them. Cared for. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, talking about, well, this house was obviously here during, not during the, what was it, the yellow fever was in the 1790s, so this house wasn't here. But the obviously Spanish flu was here. And it's been here for many pandemics, I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spanish so. flu, diphtheria, measles. Yeah. All that sort of stuff, all the stuff that's swept through. Right. Which you can go down the road here at the cemetery and you'll see a consistent line of dates when you get to sections. You can tell what, you know, that this stuff went through. It has even more personality than the old farmhouse did. Oh, I think that's true. Yeah. It rambles everywhere. Yeah. And the books are in place, and the LPs are in place, <laughs> and the TV screen is in place so that we can watch Star Trek. Yep. Where, where we're going to be the ultimate source of frustration to the powers that be at Paramount. Because we're going to sit and watch Star Trek Picard, which costs $5.7 million per episode and has the best talent and Michael Chabon as a showrunner or whatnot. But when we're good and satisfied with that, how are we going to finish off the evening? With an old original Star Trek show with $3.50 special effects. <laughs> Salt shakers for, for, for censors. Because nothing hits the spot like that. No. And it's a big screen, and you you introduced me to all of the enhanced special effects. Right. That the people have gone back and added. Special They're wonderful, effects. aren't they? They are. They don't intrude at all. They're no. beautifully tasteful, and I know exactly which classic Star Trek episode I want to watch. The Enterprise incident. Yes. Oh, I'm with the female that. Romulan yeah. commander. Yeah. That I have. I guess I can just imagine. You know, when you've seen one of those original episodes with the new special effects, you start to imagine what other original episodes will look like. And there's a, there's plenty of space action in that episode. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and a confrontation at the end, right? The yeah. Enterprise has a confrontation with her battle group. Have you seen the, the new end. animated series, the comedy? Lower Decks, no. No, I have not. I, I didn't it's either going to be really good or really bad. I don't know why. I didn't want to, to try it until I was done with Picard. I'm, Oh, yeah, because there's going to be references. There'll be references, yeah. I've, the one thing I heard, I, I saw a line online that there's apparently a reference to Captain Janeway, or maybe Admiral Janeway, in Lower really? Decks. But I, I, I don't imagine, I think it's for comedy, so I don't imagine the continuity is a big thing. The next, the next big thing, if it gets made, will be this Strange New Worlds show. I will be watching all of that. <laughs> you yeah, will not be able to use dynamite to get me out of here. Watch on a big screen with a Star Trek fanatic. The Adventures of Captain Pike, Doctor Piper, like Number guy. One, I like that guy. Lieutenant Spock. Yeah. What's that going on with Dune? I haven't been in the loop. I've been too busy. Did you watch the trailer? I did not. We'll have to watch that tonight. Get you your did. reactions to it. The trailer launched, and everybody was talking about it for a whole day. I, I don't know how. It's almost like you don't live on social media. They don't. Well, no, I, you could say I do on Instagram, right? Because it's quick. I can do something quick and not lose touch with everybody and then keep going. You're supposed to post and then spend an hour scrolling. And you don't do that. No. 
So if I were to ask you, to me, right a scroll now, is still a piece of paper. Oh, sorry. If I were to ask you right now, who Taddy Westbrook is dating? I'd have to ask you who what that person is that you just asked me about. Hopeless for two. I hey, I watched an ET episode, not the outer space guy. What was that? What's that called? Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight. I watched one of them. I didn't understand a thing they were talking about. Well, I'm hoping that Star Trek Strange New Worlds or whatever it ends up being called uh, gets made. I'm hoping a lot of things, a lot of media was misunderstanding a lot of the initial reports of that thing that, that it had been greenlit, that it was being filmed. It was just that a pitch meeting was made and favorably received. I don't think any filming has been done. But every single person connected with it wants to make it. And all Star Trek fans want it made because it's the Star Trek they love. That's what I like. Intrepid adventure. Right. I like that character. I like Simple, uh, clean cut heroics. Heroes mm -hmm. you're supposed to like. They don't have any kind of moral quagmire to them. You can call that simplistic if you like, but Star Trek fans want that, and they don't right now have it. <laughs> I saw the Star Trek related commercial this morning, it caught me by surprise. I was getting ready for work, walking by here. Eli was actually watching something, and it was a, a smoking commercial. It was Leonard Nimoy. Oh, no kidding. And his wife. What? Talking about the loss and hmm. why he died. Because he was the he was the tobacco addict, right? Yeah. You know, wonderful guy, a wonderful hero to me my whole life. But the, just the jarring reality of that commercial. It was very simple, but it was very well done. Yeah. And there's no avoiding what I know that what a tragedy that is. That that was made by the same guy who made a commercial that had everybody talking about 40 years ago, uh, where he brought Yul Brenner into a studio against a black backdrop and had him look in the camera with no special effects or script and say, hello, my name is Yul Brenner and I am dead because they arranged it to show after he died of lung cancer. <laughs> and that commercial ran for a while on TV. I am Yul Brenner and I am dead. I don't remember that. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> you know, I mean... Uh, it's just to watch Spock like that. To me, he's always Spock. It yeah. just was just. It's weird to see him when he's not Spock. The YouTube was flooding for a while. The, some channel was flooding old episodes of Columbo. So you went on YouTube, like I go on YouTube to watch many channels, including many booktube channels, and the algorithm was pumping this stuff. Probably because uh, maybe a new remastered box set is coming out or something like that. But uh, that the, show was on forever. It was on forever. Yeah, you can see Peter Falk get older. Uh, and there's an episode with Leonard Nimoy on it as, a, as an arrogant doctor. And you can see... Wouldn't McCoy like that? <laughs> well, McCoy was his preference. He was a cowboy. He was to be a cowboy, yeah. He was, <laughs> he was a great a cowboy. He was in a lot of good westerns. <laughs> so you never know with these people. <laughs> he was sharp, always with the black gloves and the black... He yeah. was a... He yeah. was a... Yeah, he played the role. Well, well, back then, westerns were everything. They were money, right? Yeah, but he also loved it. Yeah, he, yeah. he wanted to be that kind of character. I think if some show like High Chaparral had taken off for him, he would instead of Star Trek, he yeah. would have, of course. Well, that's probably that. true for Maul, right? It's just serendipity it all worked out. The yeah, way it did. You know, yeah, yeah that chemistry. Oh yeah, absolutely. they try that a million times. It only works occasionally. Right, and yeah. if you're lucky, if you if you're lucky enough to have that happen, you stick with it. Like for instance, uh, Shatner went on to be T.J. Hooker. If he'd gotten a cop show. In the early 1960s, then. Well, they had trouble getting him. He was the boy wonder. Why is that? In Star Trek. It, it because was of, he, uh, Judgment he, and Nerve? Um, yeah, and he's jumping back and forth. He was in great demand. Oh, he had man. just hit a little bit of a peak where Leonard Nimoy was really a hard working. There, there's some great stories of that. I was actually surprised. Um, remember that book, Leonard? And then, obviously, I was a little wary. Of the one Shatner did about Nimoy, remember that my one? My friend Leonard actually was better than I expected it to be, because that could have been just a nightmare of a book, right? Yeah. Could have been. But it, and to be honest with you, I went in expecting it to be yeah. a nightmare, of a, and it was not. No, it's true, isn't it? That was more sensitive. Yeah, it was, it was more. It tough. could have been just horrific. The yeah. right people were hired to make it palatable, to make it human. Well, you want those decisions to be made, right? Yeah, he always has. He, he hired Ron Goulart, yeah. the old uh, space opera science fiction author. He hired uh, 
uh, recent. Uh, I don't think uh, Shatner. Shatner didn't shift it all to somebody else. He took he took some of the hit himself. I mean, for those last few years where they were. You know, he's he Shatner didn't try to portray himself, or his writers didn't try to portray him as. Oh no! Right. 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 You know. Yeah, he does. Which is what I expected, to be honest with you. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have that. Yeah. In him, he seems to. I mean, the healthy ego of any actor. Oh, you have to. But not egomania. Right. He does seem to pull back. You know, sometimes you wonder. Yeah. And then he does sort of seem to pull back. He's so. ninety. Is he really? He's like ninety. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when Captain Kirk dies? I know. I know the emotions I went through when. Spock is. Spock and McCoy. Yeah. yeah. Spock for me more than anything. Where you, you, you suddenly realize you're not going to get a reunion. Another movie. I do remember happen. the shock of the newer Chekhov. Yeah. Never understood that story. Well, it's because the story that was put forward was obviously false. The reason you didn't understand the story is the same reason that my boys always look at you and think you're a cop. Because you, you heard the story that he was... Uh, what was it again? Pottering around in his driveway in his when a vehicle came to life and pinned him against a wall? <laughs> if you believe that, then Harcourt Fenton Mud has some dilithium crystals to sell you. Well, who knows what the story was, but the, the, the story now, the rumor now is that uh, the Abrams vs. relaunch of Star Trek is officially dead now, but they're going to relaunch it again with an entirely new cast. So we're going to get a new Captain Kirk, a new Mr. Spock. Is it going to be Abrams? I don't think he's going to be involved at all. No. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. He had but, his day. but where will it, it... Sorry for the Star Trek murdery. <laughs> but where will it happen? It obviously won't happen in the Roddenberry universe because we know those, those things. And it, it can't happen in the Abrams universe because we saw it happen already in the Abrams universe. Is the new this new Star Trek going to be in the Abrams verse, even though he's not a part of it? So picture three thousand years ago, the two of us in very fine togas, saying, "Where is, where is this new Homer story going to go? Yes, I, I mean, where where are we going to do? And we lost most of those, right? Does this align with the Homeric hymns? Is this the continuity of the Odyssey or the continuity yeah. of the Iliad?" <laughs> This isn't new, right? No, no, it's not. But we lost half of those. It'd be great to find them, wouldn't it? That was a that was a cottage industry. No, no, di well, it's different, but not much different than what we got here. Well, Star Wars goes through it all the time, right? So, anywho, how's Bean doing? We gotta get some. What do you have? <coughs> Excuse me. What is that? Oh, uh, catnip. It's somebody's cat. It's somebody's cloth mouse. Mm -hmm. You can't have this, baby. <laughs> you can't. You right, things terrible. So, anyway, we need to get to go watch some Star Trek. Yes, yes. We're thrilled to have them up here. Thrilled to have the Bean up here. I went through quarantine, <laughs> so I'm safe to be in Vermont. Yes, yeah. and pretty. F we're doing well in Vermont with the numbers. Oh, and, 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 the, and I was saying to, to your dad on the way up here, the, the state's the envy of the nation. Yeah. Common sense, and people. Watching out for each other, as opposed to. <laughs> I get. I won't go down that road. Well, you look at the politics. We have a Republican governor who listens to the science and listens to the medical people, and we have a totally Democrat-dominated um, legislature that get along and talk to each other. The only I think the only reason the Massachusetts numbers refuse to behave is because we have Boston. City of Boston. You know, I think about that though. I mean, what? It's got to be the most. There's got to be more colleges in Boston than there is anywhere on the planet. I'm pretty. Think. I bet New York is, has more. Than Boston? I don't know. W one way or another, you got people coming from all over. The airport has never been shut down. The, the, America, despite what, what some people in the country complain, America has never experienced a lockdown where you're not allowed to leave your state. No, they wouldn't. They couldn't do it they, for one thing. But, you know, the courts would. It would be a problem. You gotta. You gotta convince people and educate people that this is. I mean, they've done it here. Um, we have. Uh, you. You're always going to have your people who are just 
adamant they're not going to do things. But uh, for the most part, we don't we don't run into much of that. So and we have a lot of to quarantine is simply for me and the bean never to. So. And there's a couple ways that can be accomplished. That's true. He keeps going in that room. He keeps. He, it's, I don't think I like the sound. Of it. Well, I just said it on uh, BookTube, so you're probably safer now than when you showed up. <laughs> but we should do another video. We in will. fact, we should do. Uh, what we used to do live shows where people could could email in their questions. Boy, some of those got a little shaky, didn't they? Well, we're not tech whizzes, <laughs> but but. I'd be willing to bet that some of you might be interested in that, just firing off questions. Oh, you've been doing that Zoom thing. Zoom chats, yes. Yeah, maybe you can Zoom Jason Harrigan, and I can ask him why he got those Horatio Hornblowers, and I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, well, he was sick. He right? was. He was sick. Because when and we, but we're talking about byways in Brooklyn, Jason Harrigan, yeah. we, if it's only just random chance that all three of us aren't hanging out together. We would have been by this time. Absolutely yeah. we would have been. We're all we're all friends. Yeah. It, we would certainly have been hanging out together by now. It's just he happens to live thousands of miles away. Uh, and he made a book haul video this morning in which he mentioned that he's getting over a bad head cold. And he mentions in that video that he's not even he's not talking about all the books he got. No, I know. I think he just was and done. Yeah. The, the, he talked about a bunch of books that he got in Galway. Those Robert Graves books were beautiful. They were nice. They? Yeah. Yeah. Although for me, the, I, he, he mentioned iconic covers, but for me, the iconic covers for iconic covers. Those little paper covers. Those little yeah. PVC covers. Yeah, with the those. tiles. With the faces. Yeah, I like those. Tiles. I, I, I don't think I've seen the ones that Jason had before. I've seen them at the Brattle. Oh, have you? But I, I, haven't. I wouldn't get them because I like the old mass market paperbacks of those. It's one of the mass market paperbacks that I love. And of course, when Jason mentioned the miniseries of iClaudius. I immediately started running scenes of that miniseries through my head. Nobody, and great lines. Nobody of that was miniseries. better than Livia. Livia. Yes. Oh, she was brilliant. <laughs> you do. You got to have the bad for yourself, don't you? <laughs> you do you really imagine that I would stoop to buying you off when I could swat you like a fly if I wanted to? <laughs> I wouldn't get that way. <laughs> Where this this quivering kid says, "Well, you're very beautiful." And she says, "I was once." They say you were the most beautiful woman in the world, and she says, "There was another." But she was in Egypt, and she didn't last long. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> yes. the, oh, the great, the great Livia moment at the deathbed of Augustus Caesar when her son Tiberius comes out. <laughs> Goodness gracious! What is this? What's the matter? Cat. Cat. <laughs> it's all right, baby. <laughs> when her her son Tiberius comes into the room and realizes that Augustus Caesar is dead. And uh, Livia's telling him, you know, we'll have to inform the Senate, make sure the household knows. And as she's leaving to go about that, she looks over her shoulder and just negligently says, don't touch the figs. She was, t I remember, I was, <laughs> first time I saw, when did that come out? I don't remember. I, I, never I was remember. actually fairly young. I, I think I was in my late teens. Oh, my. Yeah. And when I was in my late teens, we were watching the real box. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not Derek Jacobin. Yeah. yeah, I remember thinking that she... It, it was like a lesson in that... Oh, you can you, actually see the cat on the stairs. Oh, can you? you when you when you watch this video, you're going to be able to see the cat go up the stairs. And that's not aggression on Frida's part. She just doesn't like people moving without her permission. That we call that aggression? She would never bite the she just doesn't like them moving around. That's all. She's the same way with dogs in my neighborhood. Doesn't like them moving around without her permission. Maybe we could watch some like Claudius clips. That wouldn't be bad. I Fine. loved them. I loved them. I got a couple different editions, but I hadn't seen those ones Jason held up. But, but but what I was saying about that that video that he made this morning is that obviously those hornblowers that he put oh, on Instagram were, were just they just didn't make the cut for that video. I watched that video and I actually thought of you. Yeah. I thought, oh no, you have excluded the wrong books. <laughs> There's going to be a squeal of protest from Booktube's other old song. <laughs> Boy, though, he found in beautiful condition with those dust jackets, those yeah. illustrations. Well, they was well taken care of. I've, I've just started... Um, Deb got me the first box set of the Folio's Hornblower. 
Um, because I, you know, I have the Patrick O'Brien for it. Yeah. And I, I love Hornblower. They're a different kind of literature, really, than the Patrick O'Brien. Very different. Yeah. But but I enjoy both of them. And uh, Hornblower is hard to beat on a Saturday, you know, when it's uh, just hanging out and you just want something straight. Very straight different energy. reading experiences, too. Yeah. You were talking about The Bounty the other day. Wasn't it you? Yeah. I got, I got, I found a copy of Mutiny on the Bounty that was made at the same time as those Hong Kong. Yeah, I've got an old copy without a dust jacket that's wonderful, and I, I love those books. Yeah, those, the first one, the most. But. Yeah, they're they're incredible, but um, horn, the Hornblower books are more sedate. Yeah. More luxury. They have a more of a lecture room tone to them, whereas the Arby and Matron books are far different. They're far more immersive. They're way different. They're way yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah the Hornblower books, you don't ever wonder what's going on, what you're, you're hearing about, right. how the different parts of, a, of a, a sailing vessel work. And in the Aubrey and Matron novels, you are thrown into that world. The patois the, is all around you, but nothing is explained. You have to figure it out on your own as you go along. I, I think that adds a depth that's unbelievable to them, though. Yeah, you, well, also, as it, fe it feels really disloyal to say it, but... Patrick O'Brien is a much better writer. Oh, I don't think Forrester. anybody would have a problem with that. I don't know. A lot of people really love, they grew up with Forrester. They, and oh, I love, you can do both. Yeah. You know, I, I have lots of writers like that. I love, love, love Louis L'Amour. I'm not going to tell you he's a great writer. <laughs> well, I guess that's true. In our little corner of book two, we don't have to worry about that. No, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll watch The Big Bang Theory on TV. It's not the same thing as watching The Africa Queen, but I'm not going to miss an episode, right? I enjoy it. Well, the people, people have made, I forget who it was, something, somebody for The New Yorker maybe, that made the observation that the Aubrey and Matron novels not only read like one huge novel, but they read like Jane Austen. Oh, I think that's true. And you'd never, no one would ever say that about Forrester. No. <laughs> or, or, or. But that doesn't mean you want to miss it. No, no, yeah. you, you shouldn't. If you like nautical fishing, you shouldn't miss either one. Well, or if you just like a rousing good tale, enjoy yourself. I actually was sitting in a room this morning. I know we're dragging a little bit here. But I was this sitting. Is what happens. Yeah, I was sitting in a room today and at the library, and I heard in the next room a father talking to his kids. Well, we're starting Treasure Island tonight. Oh my. And I just want to say bravo. Oh my. What a treat, right? I wanted to yell out, no, do kidnap first, but I didn't. <laughs> but he's reading trash. He's reading trash. He had four or five wrapped little people looking at him, and they were all excited. Oh my. I mean, how do you beat that, right? Well, you beat that with the movie Treasure Planet. Okay. Because the captain's a squirrel. Mm. <laughs> But I didn't know that, so I couldn't. You've never that seen information. Treasure Planet. No, no, I don't think you could probably ask me that in a year, and I'd probably have seen the answer. <laughs> I'm, now I'm trying to remember who the, the, the actor does Long John Silver's voice in Treasure Planet. See what happens? Know, He'll wait. throw something like that, and I haven't got a clue what he's talking about. Nope, there's treasure there, though. I know that. When I say that this house is incredibly old, it fits its owner perfectly. <laughs> Deb, you can punch him. <laughs> Why is he talking about Deb that way? She's an owner. She's the superior model Deb. Wow. I think that's true. Because I'm sitting here, if I said otherwise, <laughs> it would be bad news for me. <laughs> yeah, we still have stuff to do. We do. So we don't I'd have to survive the yeah, weekend. Yeah, survive the weekend. <laughs> he doesn't care what happens to me after the weekend's <laughs> over. All right. As long as I've got my own. Oh, my God. I'm already hating that thing. As long as I got my iPad, i fun. I got some pretty nice books to read too myself. So I didn't we'll see. Okay. We'll see what our hunting is like, and yeah. there'll be book haul videos. There will. And I because what I need to do when I move into a house is add books. Well, I have a shake tube video to do. I you, I can't. It's not optional for me if I'm one of the hosts of the thing. So I have to. I'll have to do a shake tube video tomorrow. Okay. But uh, but if we're if we're posting this tonight. We'll post this tonight, and any of you that have a Shakespeare book and a cat, I know Steve loves to get them in his email. Just since we're posting this tonight, just to, if any of you are watching, my standard uh, advisory when I come up to Vermont, I haven't had to make it in almost a year, that the flow of videos may be interrupted <laughs> from me, may be interrupted. Uh, I'll do what I can. <laughs> You'll have time. So... With that, I think we should go watch some Picard and drink some wine and um, 
We will see you all, hopefully tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, we'll be thinking of you all. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Goodbye.